well, uh, we've got uh, we've got a pivot from uh, now from pharma to from uh, real estate to pharma. Alchem Laboratories is the company that uh, is on our radar. Now, the US FDA, the regulator, has issued a Form 483 along with 10 observations for the company's Baddi facility. The observations range from drug product containers to control procedures. Let's talk about this and more. Mr. Nitin Agarwal is chief financial officer of the company. He's with us now to uh, take some questions. Uh, Ms. Agarwal, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Prashant. This side, uh, let's just start with uh, you know the nature of observations for the Baddi facility. So uh, the analyst at Nomura essentially said, and I'm quoting, he said, I, "We think the observations are somewhat concerning, and they and therefore do not rule out the possibility of a official action indicated classification. Uh, this is an important unit. It contributes between a thousand and thirteen hundred crores to your international sales. Uh, so uh, talk to us about the impl the impact as you see it." Uh, Mr. Agarwal. Thank you, Prasad. First of all, thank you for having me on your show. And uh, talk about US FDA. See, US FDA is a part of pharma ecosystem. And as part of the routine exercise, US FDA has conducted inspection at our Bhatti manufacturing facility. And we have received 10 observations. Most of them are procedural in nature. And there has been no observation on data integrity. What I want to talk more about is that if you look at our history of US FDA inspection, in last 20 years, we went through 25 US FDA inspection. And we have never received any OAI or warning letter uh, uh, in, in those 25 inspections. So I, we strongly believe that Quality is one of our core values, and the entire organization is focused on quality. And uh, we'll submit our replies uh, very soon to USFDA, and and we don't see any major challenges coming. Typically, up. typically, since you've never had any serious data integrity type of issues, twenty five observa twenty five sort of instances of uh, FD observations in the last twenty years. Uh, by the way, um, uh, I'll just come to you, Mr. Agarwal. Just want to take uh, stock of uh, the Bharati Hexacom listing as a very strong listing, right? 33% higher, stocks are about what 760 right now. Officials of the company ring the bell and uh, at the BSC and uh, the rate is up on your screen. We'll have a quick sort of update on what the company is all about with Rima in just a bit from now. Uh, so that's a new entrant, new entry uh, on the listed, in the listed universe, that's Bharti, Hexacom. All right, uh, so that's a slight diversion, but uh, we have uh, you know, Mr. Agarwal of Alchemist with us. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, What's the time uh, typically, uh, you know, in your, uh, in, the, in the history that you pointed out, how long does it take for resolution? So generally it takes three to six months, uh, Prasant. Uh, but as we have not communicated anything formally to stock exchange, so I will not like to comment here also. But if you look at our past, we had few observations in Daman also uh, in 2017, uh, but we were able to resolve everything uh, within six months. Okay. Uh, can you just remind me how much does Buddy contribute when it comes to the US? Uh, to US, it is around one third. One third of our US business, which is around oh. 200, uh, is between 2,500 to 3,000 crores. Okay. So 2,500 to 3,000 crores comes from the Buddy unit. And you're saying no, that there's uh, no possible. One third of it. Sorry, one third oh, of it. Okay. One third of it comes from the Buddy. Got it. Got it. Uh, you're saying there's no possibility of an official action indicated status, right? At the moment, uh, we we can't co commit anything. It also depends upon how the US FDA uh, authorities will consider our replies, which we will submit soon. Uh, okay. But we are confident that there has not been any major issues of data integrity, or uh, most of it are procedural in nature. Okay, okay, most of it are procedural, and you're saying you're quite confident there are there are no data integrity issues that you're facing with respect to this plant. Got it? Uh, can you tell us what are the planned launches and the key filings from this facility to the US? So generally, we file half of our products from Baddi and half of it from Daman. Uh, but in next year, if you look at our next year launches, uh, there is nothing major which was planned from Baddi. Most of it was planned from Daman. So and definitely. Uh, we are very, uh, say, confident that we will come out of it next few months. So we don't see any major impact on our new launch uh, delay in terms of delay in our on our new launches. Okay, all right. Hi, Nitin. Welcome to the show. This is Nigel on this side. You're sounding very optimistic, and you believe that you know this is not too severe, which is good news. So, given that these observations have come from the Badi unit, what can the U.S. sales growth look like 
For the last quarter, it was down close to 10%, clocking around 680 crores. So on this sort of a base, for FY25, since FY24, you know, you're in a silent period, but on whatever base you deliver in FY24, what kind of a growth can US uh, grow by? Because it contributes close to 20-21% of your total mix. Uh, Nigel, since we are in the silent period now, so from 31st March to uh, say 60 days from 31st March, we are not supposed to comment on any of the future growth perspective and all. But I would like to share what has happened in US in last, uh, say, till YTD December. So we have seen good volume growth in US. And uh, if you look at the price decline, which was in say double digit uh, in US market for not only for us, but for all the major pharma companies. So the price decline has reduced. Uh, so we saw a single digit price decline in, in uh, say first nine months of the year from April to December. And uh, we assume that this will be in the same range and the price decline will further reduce and uh, may uh, lower down to say lower single digit. And uh, we'll continue to grow our volumes in, in US uh, with our existing portfolio and with few of our new products. Okay, so you sounded like the price erosion is slowly moving away and you will focus on volume. So that should uh, help you in terms of the numbers for FY25. When you join us, post your quarter four numbers, we'll try to get a number out of you. Definitely, so we've gone definitely. on about this, about the Badi, uh, you know, part of the business. Let's focus on the other part. There is this report that indicates that the uh, DGGST intelligence, you know, there has been some bit of, a, some reports that uh, Alchem is in a spot. Could you tell us what is the status of that? Do you have any kind of clarification? Because there are reports that talk about tax evasion. Please go ahead, Nathan. So, uh, like there were reports on DGGI, GST, and income tax matters. So, I'll call both of them. Uh, so, see, DGGI, as part of routine process, they have raised some queries, inquiries with us. And we have replied to those queries. And I category want to say that there has been no case or no inquiry on bogus billings and no. Inquiry has been initiated by DGGI basis the income tax survey which happened uh, in last year. So uh, there has been news in media, but we want to categorically deny that there has been no such cases. There has been inquiry on the input credits which we have taken in last few years as part of GST input credit exercise. And when we speak to our, we understand from our various GST consultants that not only us, but many other pharma companies have received such kind of inquiries. So, and we are very, very confident uh, and based on the advice we have received from, or say since we have received from our different uh, consultants and tax experts, we are, we are very confident that we have not done anything wrong. And uh, we have only taken input credits of uh, amounts which we, where we were eligible. Okay, and no bogus billing as uh, you're clarifying. So thank you for that clarification. Final question before we let you go, you know, everything else will be in a silent period, but at least you can give us a directional uh, comment on this. You're sitting on a good amount of cash. Are you all on the prowl? Is there any kind of inorganic growth that Alchem is looking at? So uh, definitely we will, we are open to explore any inorganic opportunities. Like if you look okay. at our road drivers, we have done very well in acute segment. We have been a late entrant in chronic, so there have been portfolio gaps uh, and definitely we would like to fill up those gaps if we get a good opportunity, which is value accredited to the shareholders, uh, which is aligned to our say, uh, next uh, strat strategic plan and also which comes at the right price. So mm. definitely we will like to explore opportunities in chronic. Uh, as you may have seen that we have issued a notification to stocks exchange yeah. that uh, we will be entering into medical devices. We have formed a separate legal entity. So we plan to grow organically and inorganically in medical devices uh, industry also. So something which come up, which is lucrative, definitely we will we'll explore those kind of opportunities okay. in chronic and medical devices. Go got it. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, just one last uh, question. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, has the Director General of GST Intelligence uh, sort of uh, op opened any investigations with regards to, I mean, the allegation, I mean, the allegation seems to be that the company was claiming input tax credit uh, on expired medicines and drugs. Has, is there something happening? Yes. So uh, we have, this, as I said, that we have received inquiries from, or, and we have submitted required information to the department. And uh, as part of the process, uh, they will evaluate whatever we have submitted and they will come back to us. But 
as I said, that it's not only us. Many other uh, pharma companies have been receiving such kind of inquiries. So it's an industry-wide inquiry which has happened. So and uh, well, we'll... no, no, got that, got that. Mr. Agarwal, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. Good speaking with you and uh, thank you uh, for uh, all of that perspective. So good speaking with you and hope that uh, we're able to speak with you, uh, you know, frequently.